A long time ago, in colonies on the east coast of North America, a rebellion was born. A rebellion set on overthrowing a, a mighty empire was taking place. Across all the colonies, meetings had been held in secrecy in order to separate from what they considered a tyrannical government. This story is better known today as the American Revolution, where North American colonists fought back against the British Empire to create the United States of America. These men, better known as the Founding Fathers, had written a document known as the Constitution of the United States. This Constitution established a fantastic government complete with checks and balances that work even to this day, but not everybody was happy with the contents of the Constitution. Most notably, the Constitution lacked a Bill of Rights. Many colonies at this time had their own Bill of Rights drafted into their own governments, and many would only support the Constitution if it included one. In the end, the Constitution was still ratified, and the Bill of Rights was written as well. It is important to consider why the Bill of Rights was so important to people who lived during this time. Already rebelling against England, colonists desired a government in which their rights were protected. Not only did they want them protected, but they wanted a document that explicitly outlined what liberties were protected so that they could not be infringed on. The Bill of Rights reassured colonists that the new government being created would not be as tyrannical as the one they were rebelling from. There were 189 suggestions for liberties to be protected in the Bill of Rights, but only 10 were passed when it was finally ratified. More amendments to the Bill of Rights were added as time progressed, but I will be focusing on the first 10 amendments and explain what they do, why it's important, and give some examples as to why the amendment is still relevant today. The First Amendment is as follows. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abriding the freedom of speech or of the press, or of the right of the people to peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. The First Amendment is one of the most important amendments to the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment guarantees the freedom of religion, the right to free speech, the right to assemble, the right to a free press, and the right to petition the government. This, is one, this one is quite extensive, so we will break it up and discuss it each part. Freedom of Religion This amendment allows citizens of the United States to have the freedom to choose whatever religion they want. The ability to choose their own religion is pretty incredible considering that there are still countries today that do not allow this freedom. This amendment did not prevent the discrimination of people who worship different religions, however. It wouldn't be until the Civil Rights Bill of 1964 that religious discrimination would be outlawed. The amendment even allows cults to worship however they want, but they would be arrested if they violate a law. Freedom of Speech The freedom of speech allows citizens to say and do things to express themselves without the fear of censorship. This liberty is another liberty that is prohibited in many other countries. For example, being able to criticize our government and the actions of our presidents are things that other people would die for in other countries if they committed them. While the freedom of speech protects many things, there are certain things that you are not free to say. These things include obscenities, fighting words, defamatory, incitement to immediate lawless action, blackmail, true threats, solicitation to commit crimes, child pornography, and perjury, which is lying in court. That being said, freedom of speech even protects things such as flag burning and even hateful protests, which I will get to after my next point, which is the freedom to assemble. Citizens of the United States have a right to peacefully assemble for any reason as long as they do not break the law. Any group and organization can protest or rally for any cause they want, like for civil rights and for other political issues. This also means, however, hateful groups such as the Ku Klux Klan have the right to peacefully assemble and protest anything they want so long they submit their proper forms. The First Amendment is amazing, and without a doubt it is much more beneficial than harmful. However, groups such as the Westboro Baptist Church are allowed to assemble and protest as many things as they'd like across America. They are allowed to say mean and hurtful things to people in mourning, and some of their actions can be considered downright unpatriotic. However, their behavior is protected by the First Amendment. I highlighted a lot of negative things about the First Amendment, there are, but there are so many positive things about it that we often take for granted as well. For these reasons, I consider the First Amendment to be the most important one. The Second Amendment is as follows. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. This amendment was written so that citizens of the United States could rise up against the government should it prove to be tyrannical as the last one. 
This amendment is very controversial in today's world. The Supreme Court has interpreted this amendment in a way that means every citizen of the United States have the, has the right to own a firearm. Many citizens use this amendment in order to protect themselves and their families from criminals. Despite many attempts to ratify and alter this amendment, it still remains. The Third Amendment is as follows. No soldier shall, in times of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. The Third Amendment prevents soldiers from being able to sleep at your house. This amendment was made largely in response to the Quartering Act passed by the British government during the French and Indian War. Colonists were forced to provide free housing to the soldiers and were also forced to feed them. These soldiers would go on to take part-time jobs in the town they were residing, taking jobs from the same colonists who were forced to quarter and feed them. This amendment was passed in order to prevent this from ever happening again. The Fourth Amendment says, The right of people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. This amendment protects citizens of the United States from unlawful searches and seizures without warrants. Because of this amendment, citizens can tell police officers that a warrant is required to enter their household or to even search their car. This amendment is important today as there is a lot of controversy growing over government surveillance. Many claim that unreasonable surveillance, such as monitoring phone calls, is a violation of this amendment. The next couple of amendments regard to court and legal rights. Because these are written out in the Bill of Rights, U.S. citizens have special protections against the government regarding criminal charges. These amendments are as follows. The Fifth Amendment says, No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or in the militia, when in actual service in time of war or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. This means that government cannot go around jailing people without a good reason. It also means that a person cannot be held in double jeopardy, which is when a person is tried twice for the same crime. It also means that a citizen in court does not have to answer for any questions that may incriminate himself. How does this work? Well, watch this video. Is it true you were a crack cocaine dealer for seven years? I, I plead the fifth. <laughs> Sir, will you tell us about the cartels you dealt with in your time as a crack cocaine dealer? Um, no, but I can tell you that I plead the fifth. Exactly how much money did you earn in your time as a crack cocaine dealer? Damn. in the Constitution of the United States of America. I can only choose one. I can only choose one. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Five. One, two, three, four, fifth. Anything you say, fifth. Go ahead, ask me a question. Did you... Fifth. A secret document that I think you need to say. Thank you all, sir. Good afternoon. I got your sentence reduced to a month. Buddy. Oh! <laughs> While this is satire, playing the fifth to the questions asked in the video would be a wise choice. The Sixth Amendment. The Sixth Amendment says, In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy a right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, and to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense.
This amendment is very big on protecting citizens on trial. Firstly, they have the right to a swift and speedy trial, meaning if you commit a crime, you will not have to wait for years to be tried. You also have the right to see the persons testifying against you, and you have a right to an impartial jury. This amendment also gives us our Miranda rights, such as the right to a lawyer. The Seventh Amendment states that, in suits of common law where the value of controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of common law. This amendment means that if the value of a crime exceeds $20, a jury will preside over the case. This goes along with the Sixth Amendment where they make sure the, the jury is impartial and other things that regulate jurors. The Eighth Amendment says that excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. The amendment is pretty self-explanatory. United States citizens must be given bail appropriate to, for the crimes they have committed. They are also protected from cruel and unusual punishments. This part has been left up to interpretation. It is generally agreed that torture is cruel and unusual, but many people disagree on issues such as the death penalty. This amendment was especially talked about during the War on Terror, where it was found that the United States was waterboarding its prisoners as a humane form of torture. Because of this, this amendment is still very relevant today. The Ninth Amendment is a catch-all amendment. It says, The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. This means that things not listed in the Constitution and not prohibited by law are rights given to citizens. For example, the right to choose who you marry and to choose your own career are examples of this amendment in work. The Tenth and Final Amendment says, The power is not delegated by the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. This means that the states get to make their own laws so long as they do not infringe on federal laws. This is relevant today as many are pushing to legalize gay marriage and other social and political issues. These are all 10 of the United States Amendments. I hope that my video was helpful. Please like, subscribe, or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.